All right, got it. So, um, yeah, like Matt said, I'm Rachel, I'm Alark. Um, I guess I'll just start going. Um, why can't I change that? There you go. Okay, so this is a little bit about me. Um, so I'm a design tech and your desk. Um, I basically, I work in front end development and I also do UX stuff. So some people might say, I'm a unicorn. I would say I'm sort of a unicorn. I don't really touch a lot of the research end of UX, so um, I would I wouldn't say I'm a full unicorn. But um, uh, I, I've worked in Udesic over five years, and my education is in the tech side. And I basically learned everything from Matt, the guru at Nudesic. Um, work related interests you can read those. Um, my other interests, um, my probably top three would be knitting, music, and space, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's continue. Um, and now you know, you know a little bit about me. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of procrastinate on this a lot. Um, so you're not really getting the full uh, intended presentation. I cut mobile out because I just didn't have time. And when I started looking at what I would have to cover to get that in there, it, it was just too much. So you're just getting web. Hope everyone's cool with that. If you have any major complaints about it, take it up with Matt. Hey. <laughs> um, so just what we're going to be talking about today, um, I'll give a super back to basics intro on atomic design and then go into uh, what a developer sees when they're handed a design and how it's not necessarily in the atomic design mindset. Um, then I'll go through some layouts and give you some code demos to show you how it actually works in code and why some developers may not want to do the right thing. They'd rather be lazy, but again, we'll get there. And then I'm just going to have some discussions um, about designing um, dynamic UIs and how you can approach it. Maybe we get some good opinions from some of you people who have designed beautiful dynamic UIs. Um, and then another quick little discussion on tips for, as a designer, how you talk to developers and to get them to actually understand what you want them to do. Um, and then that's pretty much it. And hopefully you learned something. All right. So Atomic design, atoms, makeup molecules, makeup organisms, makeup templates, makeup pages. I mean, I mean you know, I'm, most designers have heard this before, not really anything new, um, but I just wanted to, to put this groundwork here just so that everyone has that basic understanding if you just stumbled in here and you have no idea what UX is, right? Okay. Who's um, uh, I wanna know, raise a hand or shout. Who hasn't heard of atomic atomic design? Okay, Brent okay. for sure. <laughs> so let me. Um, I'm a student. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I'll 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 get into it more when we start talking about the. Yeah, okay. it just just yeah. This sure. is the super ground level. We'll get a little deeper into it, and then just this, I promise. Okay, awesome. so this is what a developer sees. They're thinking in all of these great little how these things fit together and build things and they're modular and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, developers just see boxes. Um, you see design, designers will see how atoms make up molecules, make up organisms and developers, are just, it's just stuff. You can put boxes inside boxes, this is fine. We'll just throw another box in there. And that's mostly because in development, everything's based off of the box model where you've got your size. If I move my mouse, can you guys see that? Or is that like hidden for you guys? Yeah, I can see it. Can okay, see cool. It. Okay, so if, um, uh, so you'd have your, whatever your, your content is would be where this auto times auto is, which would show you your width and height usually. And then you've got padding and then whatever your border is, and you got a margin around your container. Pretty straightforward. Anyone who's used Chrome DevTools have seen this because this is just a screenshot from Chrome DevTools. 
Um, so every object in any kind of UI really is based off of this box model. In non-web environments, it, it could change a bit. They might have some different naming conventions or the math might be different, but it's all based off of boxes. So if you have any questions on this before I continue, everyone kind of understand where I'm going. All right. It looks like Tyron, you raise your hand. Is that a, a question or you just forget to put it down? Yeah. Tyron, oh, is that from the earlier part? Might have been from earlier. I, I'm not yeah, earlier. Okay, well, I'll just continue. Um, so let's just get into a pretty basic layout. Um, so I just took the nav bar from Pinterest and we're gonna talk about this. So I'm assuming most of you have at least seen Pinterest if you don't use it yourself. Um, so as a designer, and this is where if you wanna chime in, you're welcome to. Um, I don't like to keep these talks as more of a discussion, not just me talking at a computer because that's boring. But if you have something to bring up, you know, feel free anytime, interrupt me, um, go for it. But um, so as a designer, what are the kind of things you see? Which parts of these, this, this UI are atoms, molecules, and organisms? Anyone want to say anything? Give me a second to unmute. The um, colors are atoms, so red and black and gray. Yep. Okay. Photography styles are atoms. All right. Anyone else want to add anything? Is the whole bar an organism? Yeah, it, it would be considered an organism. Yeah. All right. I would uh, say the home in the little indicator dot, that would be a molecule. All right. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else want to add anything? I'm going to say the search bar is a molecule. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. All right, so well, let's let's just completely dissect this. So we've got this big navigation bar, which is an organism. Our logo button, it, it's a nav bar. We all know these are buttons, right? So that's that would be an atom molecule for the home button, as as Matt said. Um, you know, we got search bars for organism um, made up of molecules and atoms together. So that's kind of interesting, and then a few other. Um, molecules and atoms. So if you really want to get in the nitty gritty, this is at least what I came up with. And um, I personally don't consider things like colors atoms. So I would consider those as like particles, like electrons or neutrons or protons that make up atoms. But um, everyone has a little different um, approach to the atomic design when it comes to the very basic. Anyway, it's an atom. It's it's a you know, I, I consider it an atom. An yeah. atom. So it's no different than. Well, this would be a question to the, to the group: Is space around it an atom? Yes. How you define your spacing can be considered an atom. See that? I would also consider that a particle, something that's less than an atom. Isn't it? Maybe if, we're, if we're like doing the analogy know, to science, I could see that. But yeah. like when I'm building a design system, I just go down to atoms. So I'm thinking about what I literally yeah, build there's in XD. Well, in atomic design, anyway. So okay. Well, this is this yeah, is a good that, discussion. Like I have the but... I have that same relationship with buttons. Like, is it an atom or is it a molecule? Because it's made up of. <laughs> I know it's defined as an atom, but yeah, there's some there's some little gray areas. Yeah, especially okay. they. They went from the whole analogy to pages. They went from atoms, molecules, organisms, oh, pages, but yeah, either way, right. it's yeah. good stuff. Yeah, so um, anyway, so this is what a designer would think. A developer would just start making boxes. So this is HTML. Um, we'll, I'll go through this line by line, but um, you don't notice they're, they're nested elements there's it's kind of like a outline type of look um and i'll just we'll just dissect kind of what this looks like and why the developer might think this way so here we've got the base element our nav bar that would be an organism if we're going to go with the atomic um uh, equivalent 
And then we go to our next level. And this is kind of where that uh, starts to get hairy. You notice all the different colors. We got atoms are gray, organisms are blue, and uh, molecules are green. So everything's, it, it's kind of all mishmashed in the, the same level of code. And then you break that open again, you see how everything's nested and it's still, you don't see a clear definition of what's molecule versus an atom. Um, so does, is like this, anyone have any questions? Is this like completely over, over people's heads? Like any feedback before I continue? I have a question. I, yeah, go ahead. Does, <clears throat> does a class have an analogy to the atomic system? It, it would be like a group of things that are similar. So if they all have the same class, they're all similar. Or they, they share it. This class is how you would style elements, basically. Okay. Yeah. And you can have multiple classes. Well, I'll get there. It'll be later on. Well, part of the demo. Okay. Um, so I just put classes here so you can kind of get an idea what, what goes with what. Yeah, here, navbar has an icon logo, has a text badge. And I, here I am pointing at the screen with my finger. Yeah, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, and then you have your today button and then the search bar and the icon bell, the icon message and the account menu. So you can kind of see how those the top level lays out horizontally in order. It's basically an outline of the, the UI. All right. So, okay, this is the question, Julia. Yeah, whatever, we'll just skip that slide. Okay, so let's see what that looks like in a browser. Um, this is kind of a little outline of the demo. So as I get lost because I didn't have a dry run of this presentation, what I can reference. All right, so, here, if you've never seen code before, um, I apologize. The green hey, stuff Rachel. is commented. Yeah. Hey, Rachel, I think it'd be a good idea just to show people how you got to this, like where you can inspect Okay, the yeah, code. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I mean this, yeah, okay. So the this is actually just two windows side by side. So the left side's just web browser, it's Chrome. Oh, yeah. And then on the right, this is my code. It's, okay. it's VS code. It's just my, it. my editor. So that's that's oh, nothing okay. special, Never I mind. promise. I thought, um, I thought this was the browser for some reason. Um, yeah, I mean, that I'm goes trying to get to back show, to a thousand pixels here. Yeah, no problem. I think there was a, somebody that had never done a code inspector. So but anyway, when you get yeah, to yeah. that. Yeah, Ooh, that's but the part down at the bottom. Yeah, right here. This is, yeah. this is dev, dev tools right here. Um, cool. So if you have to have the, developer mode or whatever it's called, enabled in settings. And then you just right click on something, hit inspect and this will pop up. So it's developer, web developers use this all the time and I'll be using it today. So um, you'll get a little sneak peek under the hood of what a website looks like. Um, so- are you, are you in Chrome right now? Yeah, this is Chrome. Um, and then this is just the built-in dev tools feature. You just have to turn on developer mode. For those that don't know how to get to the dev. Yeah. How, how do you get to it? Um, so there's, you'd have to open up your preferences and there's something about dev tools. Okay, yeah, it's been, I mean, I always have it turned on, so I don't know how to turn on dev tools. Honestly, like Chrome, it's one of those things Chrome that it's just, it I always have on. It I might be. Chrome always has it on. Safari is so, the one that you have to turn on. Yeah, that true. could be. Okay. So yeah. So if you just yeah. right click anywhere or click with two fingers or whatever, if you're in a trackpad, uh, this inspect is how you, you get this pane to open up. Yeah. yeah. And then for the, for the designers, right? So for designers, like some, some really it's good to, to use this just to identify like, what's the spacing, what's the color of something. It, it really, like once you start using this, like you're really gonna be able to translate some of, the, some of your ideas to, to code pretty well. 
yeah I think like you can color pick a gradient because you can find it in in the the dev tools kind of thing like you're not really color picking you're just I seeing what the is a great tool for any even designer to go in and understand what co what text that is or what color that is by using this sometimes you can use like color pickers you know other tools you can do that with but you know if you want to understand how it's been constructed you can get in there yeah yeah right. so yeah. um all right so that that code i showed you with the the pinterest nav bar that's right here and then this is what it looks like when there's no styling on it doesn't really look like that nav bar does it no it doesn't looks like uh, uh uh, what is it called? What's that? Uh, what's that? that what this is your default browser. Whenever you put something without any styling, this is what the browser like does. The first web page I, I created. <laughs> yeah. So if you're just starting out with, with web development, it'll probably end up looking all like this until mm -hmm. you figure out CSS and styling. Um, yeah. So, and then I did actually style this. So here, if I get rid of this comment, you can see, yeah, this is all the styling code that I use. And I can go through this um, if we have questions. I'm more than happy to explain what background color means if someone doesn't understand what it is. So um, we'll, we'll get there, but. Um, oh wait, do I have the wrong HTML again? Uh, okay, how do I get rid of this? Um, bar for because I can't click my my tab. What's up? F eleven. Uh, okay, what's F eleven when you're? Oh, it, okay. The it'll function key. Hopefully, maybe. knock it out of. Yeah, it should knock it out of uh, this uh, mode. Split screen. Split screen. Oh wait, do you want it out of the? Split no, screen? I just the like the zoom menu thing is in my way, so I can't uh, click on the tab I need. Yeah. You can you can actually grab that little green thing and drag it around on the tab. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Okay. My tutor, I, uh, so I, I'm in Zoom all the time. Yeah, I'm, I'm not around. used to, I'm used to using like Teams or GoToMeeting. I'm not used to, to Zoom. So anyway, uh, I just want to make sure that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, so this is just the code without any, any class names, like as little as you can get. Um, and I am using an icon library for those of you who are interested. Um, it's just the default bootstrap one. Uh, this is the one I need to. That was just an example of what it looks like without any classes or anything. There we go. That looks more like it. Sorry, this, you know, like I said, you're, you're witnessing the dry run here. So bound to have things go wrong. So this same code when styles are not present. Even though it has class names, the browser doesn't know what to do with it. Uh, yeah, yeah, see, so this is what it was before. And then with styles, it looks like this. Um, so these are just static styles. If you notice, I adjust the browser size. It stays exactly where it is. It doesn't grow or move anything. It's not at all responsive. I mean, just in the fact that the, the browser will automatically stack things when there's not enough space, like that doesn't really count as responsive, but it does do that, but it doesn't grow as it gets bigger. Any questions? Like let's, look at, um, let's look at the breakdown of what's happening there. Yeah, so, okay. Two different versions in the classes that we're calling. Right that okay. are different, oh, you know, adding the class navigation yeah. looks like. So I will uncomment this so we get a nice code right. coloration. But um, yeah, and, and the other thing to point out is like that header.html, think of that as your organism, right? So in code, right, Rachel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, so, and then, that, um, yeah. Yeah, sure. So I, I can kind of go over that. So here is header. So that yeah. holds this, all this code is in that one line in this like parent file. Yep. And then I have this, this content, this is that 
the the text on the page. So that's how like a like an atomic design like atomic design system like really translates to code is now you have that that header which is the organism mm -hmm. right and it's in your design system um so there's some good stuff in there yeah so um, you have to design these things and then yeah. the developers hey this is a reusable component we should make yeah. this reusable in code don't just rewrite it every single time don't copy paste make it something yeah. you can reuse <coughs> bless you <laughs> um yeah so and then i'll i have some other demo stuff i'll be on commenting later and then there's the footer which is just where this partial source is something that comes with um like you can't do that in html for the most part right um this is a project based off of gulp so it's i, I don't know if it's i don't think it's built in it's part of the gulp yeah. process i'm using yes yeah. So it's like this is more like a more <laughs> ma modern, like it's a more modern way of creating HTML code, like for the yeah. people that don't. If, if you want to get into the file structure here, yeah, this is the working code, the source file. This is the code that we edit, and these are like plugin packages mm -hmm. that help that you don't really yeah. look at, you just use, and then the, like I said, gulp, will take all of these source files and packaging them up very nicely into the code that the browser reads. What's nice about that is you can do partial views inside of a main view that allows you to organize yeah. it better and reference yeah. okay. smaller portions of the page, kind of like I'm dating myself, like struts back in <laughs> that day in MVC, those kind of things. But um, yeah. right. anybody use struts? Yeah. <laughs> Never. <laughs> oh, oh man. <laughs> um, I can't even think of what I was, like people are using. Um, yeah, a lot of copy and paste. Find and replace. Have you ever done find and replace? Yeah, no. that's the end uh, all. That's a li that's life right there. <laughs> find and replace. <laughs> yeah. There's a all question right. in the chat. How do you do? Oh. Did you connect the HTML with CSS? Okay. All right. So, um, so how do I connect the HTML with CSS? So if you go to our, sorry, I need to minimize my thing so I can actually see my code. Um, so this is the, it's in the header. And this would and be in the header for, if you're gonna statically create this in HTML too. So it's- Right, it's, yes. I this, want this, to be confused with how this editor works with this stuff and, um, versus if you were just going to bring out text edit and just write the code because yes it's, you know it um, generates that but yeah yeah, yeah how many so the, like so there's like the the inline um you know like talk about like the various you know the external style sheet versus inline yeah. versus um within you the head slide, you're slide taking your... my thunder danny i know <laughs> all right so um so the way um, you can link a separate style sheet is right here. Um, here, I'll close this so you can see more. Yeah. Um, inside the HTML file, you have this major HTML tag. It goes all the way down to the bottom of the page. Um, and then there's always a head. Well, yes. I don't know if you ne technically need one for it to, but you, you should have one. Um, and then you just put in this link tag if you're so, into world usability day, you definitely want to have a head in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, um, so if you notice, it's like the tab name of this, I defined right here in the head as a title. Um, There's certain things that are required, certain things that aren't. Maybe yeah. the head, but you're not going to get very far without it. <laughs> yeah, and you, you have, um, I don't know if this is something that's required either, but it's something you should have. Um, your icon, I just use the default one. That's the little icon here. So you can that customize easy. that with another icon. You just have to tell it where in your project to look for it. And by your project, it's just your file structure of what you're you're running. Um, Back in the day, you had to do like a favicon and you had to do a bunch of crap like that. Like mm -hmm. you just reference a ping and then it's it. That's it. Um, so this is how, because this is like a, project in the actual rendered HTML. 
okay. that the browser is reading. Um, it does have, oh, I guess it doesn't have a five icon. No, it's just pink. Interesting. Maybe they don't, I mean, I don't know. I haven't, yeah, last last yeah. I checked, it had to be called five, five icon, but mm. I guess uh, not You could anymore. do a PNG. You can do a PNG or, or Favicon. Yeah. And then there's just other metadata, like what character set we're using a UTF-8 font. Like, I mean, just basic things. I think you can even um, say if it's a uh, international and what language it's in. So um, you can um, only show up in search engines that are in that language. Like there's a lot of stuff that this this head and these meta tags can can do. Um, and this is just bare bones stuff. Um, yeah. Okay, so then. Increase the size of the, the ID so I can see. Okay, I asked if we could see it fine. Well, no, no, I meant like slide slide the oh you just mean just give them more size <laughs> okay gosh be more specific um uh yeah uh so then you see here um so that style sheet is being referenced in the head here in my header which is imported into this index file here which is then processed and eventually spit out here. And then that's given to the browser to read. That's not confusing enough. Um, SAS is a way to build styles in a language that's easier to read as a human, but will um, process into, where's my CSS? It will process into something that looks more like this. Uh, you may not notice a difference really, but um, it okay, that at the end is different, but that's that's just metadata. You don't have to know that. Um, the this like just the name of this is harder. Like to, SAS to like change changed yeah. my life as a <laughs> as a developer. I'll yeah. say so that. If, yeah. So if you notice like, you have things nested in at different levels. Yeah. That's an easier way to say the same thing as it's a nav element with a class of UX navigation. Oh, but this is the child with this class that's inside that other thing. And I don't necessarily recommend writing the styles exactly as I did it. This was quick and dirty. I wanted to show you guys something and I didn't have a ton of time because I procrastinated as we've all already heard. Um, yeah. So, um, yes. that's like, basic. So I, how... I want, I want, I would say, like, point out, like, I want to point out that, like, the these com this is like, like a very modern, like, development workspace, right? Yeah, and, and so, and so the 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 thing that this does is it compiles, and it makes you, it allows you to to create applications with less code. Right, than before. It's, it's not necessarily it, less code. It's just code that's already been written for you by someone else that makes it right. faster. So, like, like you don't have you to worry a, about like the specificity stuff. Yeah. Right? yeah. Right. Yeah. So you don't necessarily like you don't have to write as much code yourself because yep. of all the stuff that's already been done under the hood. You're just taking advantage of. Yeah, and that, yeah. and I, I like, I feel like you know, like before. I would have to do a search and replace for every color of mm -hmm. UX and AZ's primary color across my CSS. Um, and now, oh, like sorry, through cool. SCSS, I have variables that I can just change at the top. So like that's where that's where the magic yeah. is in so this. Is, it's yeah. like building a component in XD. If you change yep. one part of the main component, the instances all change. Yeah. yeah, life changing. Mm -hmm. A lot yes. like that. So this, um, I have Bootstrap installed here because we'll be showing that to you later. But um, one cool thing is that everything is themed and it takes your colors and just like, these Perfect. are the two theme colors I want to use. And then it makes it work. You don't have to mess with the colors anymore. You have to, to reference them like art. primary or, you know, whatever, you know, primary, 
six if you want the darker version or lighter version or you know, whatever. But and then like to add to our line spacing debate that we had at the beginning, you can change the life line spacing on Bootstrap at the higher level, right? Like mm -hmm. what's the what's the distribution? So I think as designers, it's important to understand like in this side, like what's your what's your end result from a from a delivery perspective, um, so that you know how to customize responsibly, not responsibly, but responsibly, be responsible, mm -hmm. um, you know. Anyway, I, like okay. obviously Rachel and I are very passionate about this. So we've talked yes. about it and before. Right now, my project, we're working with design tokens, which are amazing, life-changing things. So um, I probably we'll do a, a, a talk on that in the future because it's, it's very new and there's still a lot of stuff to work out and but it, the, the promise of it is amazing. Don't tease uh, before, us. Okay, yeah, before I digress us, too much. I well, mean, that's, that's, the group, that's right? part of How the much reason why have? I would, uh, I don't know, like, two hours. Yeah. yeah, so like, but, there's one thing that I want to know, like I've always wanted to have the flex box versus, like, I think you had that as part of the We're topics. getting there, Danny, you're interrupting okay. me. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Just since right. we're doing stress course, can you talk about the difference between REM and 12 pixels? Yeah, sure. Uh, so a REM, most browsers have it set to 16 pixels, but anyone can go in there and change their browser settings. So someone who has low vision or, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, really, that's the reason you would change it. I don't know anyone else who would change it. So um, people who need to have very large print in order to read things. We'll go in there and change it. My, uh, uh, the base text size to be 24. So nothing smaller than 24 rather than 16 for the average person with normal vision. So um, this font, font sizes, uh, you should pretty much always have in REMS, especially with web. I mean, you can't really, it doesn't translate the same if you're using mobile or anything like that. But in web, you definitely want to use your font sizes as REMS. And then anything else can be scaled off of those as well. Um, and here, I, like I said, this was just a static example. I was trying to be quick and dirty um, to show you what a static example is like and how it doesn't scale. Um, so I just use pixels for a lot of stuff. Um, it's just a habit of mine to use REMS for certain types of things. So that's that's really the difference. So given that the base size is 16, one and a half REMS, can someone figure out what that would be? So 1.5 16, yeah. Yay. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so that's exactly what it is. So it'd be 24 pixels, given that a the browser setting for a REM is, is 16. And then if someone had scaled it up to be 20 in their browser, so one and a half would be then 30, right? So everything scales in proportion. So you're not losing a lot of um, that hierarchy because someone changed the browser settings. It scales gracefully. Can I ask a question about that? Sure, uh, yeah. On line 36, you have 0.8 REMS. Does that violate the user's request of um, using like a, a minimum level of like 14? Um, so if someone has uh, accessibility set and they say, I absolutely don't want to see any text smaller than 20 pixels, this will bump it, it will bump it up to, to that minimum. Oh, but okay. someone who doesn't have those accessibility settings set, they will see it smaller than that, that, um, that RAM setting. Oh, cool, thank you. Default. Yeah. There's um, a question. What is the difference be uh, between RAM and RAM? Um, so RAMs are based off of the, um, the, browser setting, um, M's are, I just know that REMs are what you should use and REMs are, are not as good and they don't scale. I looked this up once and <laughs> then I completely forgot, but 
yeah. I, <laughs> so use RAMs, I think, don't use AMs. <laughs> Just I think M M is a M M is an old typography term. Oh oh oh! That, actually, I remember it. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. so M's go are ahead. based on the current size of the text of the object you're using. So if you have a um, you set, let's say like this text here is I don't know what it is. I, don't know, I could look it up. It's it's let's say it's thirty pixels just for a number, right? So then um, you can have this um, as a setting higher up in your. So it's basically inherited text sizing. So okay, how, let's see. Do I have an example where I can? You got it, it, Rachel. Yeah, I need you an got example. It. I just need an example of some HTML I can show here. I'll just, I'll just open up the, okay, I just need to make this wider and bigger. And we'll go to a different website. Um, yeah, I just I just learned um, in my course at ASU it's, it's, that like, so when you're doing responsive design, you set the uh, M's and our instructor, of course, said use M's, not RAMs, <laughs> uh, but you set the M's in, um, what is it, your uh, CSS. And then you, as you're building your design from mobile to um, desktop, you adjust the M's. I mean, I, do you do the same thing with RAMs then? Yeah. Well, the, I think there's, uh, you just hit a debate there's a debate yeah, so, versus M's. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> didn't mean know any kind of worms. Okay. <laughs> they have different they have different uses. Um so okay. REMs are for scaling based on a fixed size that is set by your browser. M's can be set in a style sheet and then it'll scale based on that. Um it'll, it'll so scale like so you can have let's let's say that this here, I need a lower level diff here to show you. So let's say this div that's highlighted in blue, this this section of the page, I just threw in a rant. So we'll see how this analogy works out with my random website I just typed in. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this uh, this blue box would be the, the content space of this. And it, let's say it has a width of, where's my, so it's got a width of 980 pixels, all right? So 100% of that is 980 pixels. So you can have a lower level div, something that's inside here. So if on this div you set, I want um, text size to be, or like any, I guess, I don't know if it's just text actually. No, you got it. You got it, Rachel. Like basically if your text size was yeah. one. So if your M, text size, yeah, if your text size here is set to 18 pixels and you use 0. 0.8 pixels here, you get 0. 0.8 times 18, which is a weird random number. But um, so your text would scale based on the style of this saying, this is my one unit and this is 0. 0.8 of that one unit. If you set this to be 0. 0.8 M and this was 18 pixels. It's your nearest parent. So if you had a wrapper around something that's defining text sizes, anything inside of it, the, um, you can adjust the uh, rem to, or the m to that. Yeah. The, the rem is based on the root calls inside the style sheet. So you call that. Oh, shit. Right? Yeah, yeah, the root M, that's why it's a RAM. Yeah, and where you get in trouble with that, I've, I've had these issues in the M, like a 1M is different. Like, let's say I have a style that says my text should be 1M, E-M, and, and I put it inside of a container that has the base as a 12, as a 1EM. Like, mm -hmm. that's where you get in trouble because it's not consistent. Yeah. that makes sense and yeah so rems are the way to go even if you don't understand why <laughs> i think we can all agree that pixels are not the way to go on anything yeah <laughs> somebody, so, like, 
<laughs> my yeah, my quick and dirty example shows you that. See, you get your nav bar starts to wrap and it doesn't work. And then you soon realize that there's religions to development. <laughs> yes, they're definitely um are uh, boot, very strong bootstraps opinion. in RAM, right? Rachel, bootstrap, SAS. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean you could overwrite it with pixels, but by yeah. default it's it's RAM. Yeah. Yeah. You just get laughed at. <laughs> All right. Um, Unless you're the ASU teacher that's teaching to use yeah. ends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's a use case for it. Um, yeah. I haven't really come across one, but there probably is, or just a different approach of doing things. Um, all right. So back to my original point I was trying to make with this Pinterest bar, unless someone else has questions they want hey, to you answer. said to interrupt now you're saying not to interrupt hey yeah i'm just, I'm just i thought usually you have to coax people to talk i wasn't expecting this um okay so what we do to style this um i just basically gave things class names and that's just a way to to grab a style in the way we're using this um there's other reasons you can have classes but um for our our purposes is just for styling. So here we've got this button here, the Pinterest icon. I gave it two because this one is actually what makes that icon the Pinterest icon. And then anything with a UX prefix, which is a lot, those are custom uh, styles that I wrote. So anything with a BI prefix, that's just defines an icon. So we got the Pinterest, the search, the bell, the chat, and the person are all icons that I'm just using bootstrap icons. Um, what is BI for? Bootstrap icon. Oh, that's okay. just their, their oh. naming convention. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, and then, all right, so we kind of get icons, their classes assigned to an element and then uh, custom styles begin with UX. So I'll go over first what I did with this. Um, uh, how do I split pane again? I think I just drag. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so on this element here, we are applying these styles. Well, all of, actually there aren't any styles for this specific element. Um, but there's, it's a parent, so that'll be, uh, yeah, why did I even do that? Oh, because of this. Okay, so in SAS, this is a cool, cool little thing you can do. So this basically just says whatever my parent is. So a nav with a class of this UX dash navigation, this and all of its direct children. So if you, if you did, didn't put this in there, it could be all of its children whether they're direct or not, basically grandchildren, great-grandchildren, et cetera, would right. inherit these styles. But um, yeah, if you're thinking of this hierarchically, so it'd be just the button, just this button, just this button, just this div, but not this icon, not this input field, not this selector. It would only be the direct children. Um, so that's, that's what makes SAS cool. You can apply multiple things just because of how they're related. Um, you can do that in CSS too, it's just easier to read in SAS. Um, you would have to have inline block on almost everything that's called there. Um, no, you could just, um, instead of writing this at the root, you know, having, instead of having this nested under this, you could write it in pure CSS. It would just be. Right. Well, that and then you'd have, can you even do the star in CSS? Actually, maybe you would have to do that. Each, yeah, I think, each yeah. individual element. Yeah, that's what makes SAS great because you don't have to call yeah. it every time you can adjust all of it after that. Yeah, I have just been using SAS so long I forget what CSS is like. All right, <laughs> um, so we give everything in those uh, top margin and a left margin of 12 pixels. So if we were to inspect one of these things, you can see it's got top and left of 12. 
And if you select this one, top and left to 12, and you can see for sure that that's the item that is highlighted because it's blue on the UI up top. Um, and then it, you can also just highlight, I want to see just the padding, or if there's no border, so it doesn't show you anything. And then, yep, margin does have 12 and 12. So that's applied to all, all of these items here. This, this whole bar has a single object, and then the bell has a single object, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then as you get to buttons, all buttons of any type, as long as it has a button tag, is going to get these two styles here. Doesn't have a border, so we're taking away the borders, those lovely borders here, we're taking those away. And we're also making it have a transparent background. So we're getting rid of that gray and the border. And then you get this on every button. We're doing that. Um, and I can prove that. Once it's I... funny how most there we of go. the <laughs> yeah. Most of the time you go through and blow away anything that's inherently yeah. available for you in HTML. It's like yeah. so, we don't have any of that stuff. Let's do yeah. it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh if this is your starting point, there's a lot of stuff you gotta remove, unfortunately. Just default browser settings. Um Greg made a living off of this, just leaving it the way it is. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so then uh, any of these icon buttons, so that'd be the, the Pinterest and then these three guys here, those all have these styles. So it's just setting the font size. So because they're icon fonts, the font size is what controls the size. So I could say, I don't want, these are too small. I want to make them bigger. All the icons should get bigger. Yeah. And then everyone's at the layout because it got bigger. Let's go back to where we were. And then it takes off the border of all those. And actually, I don't even think I need that because it's taken so off on the other ones. For you, if you want to answer it, it's uh, will this override the children's style? Okay. So, cool thing about CSS is their cascading styles. And all that means is that if you de you can define the same thing multiple times, it'll just, if you overwrite the property in a later style, the later one will take precedence over the earlier style. Um, so I could say, for example, I want all of these, I, okay, okay, so we, I just proved that we didn't need to have this here, right? I comped it out, nothing changed. So this was here unnecessarily, but what if all buttons didn't have that border, but specific buttons, I do want that border. So for these icon buttons, I want to have a border. I could put, I want a, five pixel wide border that is solid and is purple. Wait a second, there we go. Icon buttons do. So our regular buttons, although it's defined here that there's no border, those icon buttons still have this style, but this one will override it because it's defined later. Hopefully that answers your question. for me okay so we'll undo that um and icons are all this gray color except the pinterest one we made it red so again that's another this is overriding this initial gray color because it's specifically the the pinterest icon and notice here that i'm using the class from bootstrap icons I can do that, even though it's it's not, not my code. I can still grab that property from that element because it's it's just part of this HTML document. It means multiple things to bootstrap icon plugin. It it means put this icon there, but I can also say use in from that same identifier, we'll make the icon red now. So 
um, it's, it's kind of, you can, um, you don't have to write custom everything. You can utilize what you're already given. Um, UX bet. So this is the, the badge on this icon, the, the number on the bell, the 93, making it red. The text color is white. That's a little thing that's hard is that text color is just color in CSS. Don't know why. It's not like font color, like font you size is font size. Thing ever about CSS. Why, when you would use background color versus just color. Because your icon or your font, even though it's a picture in this case, is technically using color. Yeah, so the, the icon fonts, the color is a font color gray. And here again, we've got this 93, the, the, the color of the type is white. So color, even though it's used as a fill here, it's used as a, a, a type color here. So that's just, if you're using icon fonts, that's something you have to get used to, but because otherwise it'd be fill gray if you're using like an SVG or something. Okay, um, where was I? So yeah, it got me colors defined. I'm saying it's a, a smaller size than, than my 16 pixels. Uh, the border radius, so this is how you round corners. Um, you just give it a border radius and I'll apply it to all the corners. I could make this uh, nothing. And it's pointy, just like a box. Because everything in development is a box, right? Even the the icons are boxes. They're just icon letters inside a box. Um, lighting, as I'm as I'm talking about that, I'll I'll show it show you how. So actually, that one's probably not the best. I'll do the SHR icon. Yeah, there's your box. It just has a content in it. All right. Um, I'm setting a specific height. Um, and then this one is confusing because we're overlapping two things. Do you notice over here, our button? It's, it's got the bell and it's got the text under it. Uh, here, we have to do this fancy magic to make it be where it's supposed to be. Otherwise it looks like that. And that's not what we want. So we give it a relative position, which if you don't give it any modifiers, doesn't do anything. But then you specify, I want it to be 40 pixels from where it normally is. I'll make it move up. And then I want it to move over 10 pixels. And that's how you do that. Because most elements are block, except for certain elements like buttons and. Yeah. Yeah, so, so um, well, that'd be a display actually, is this position. Um, so position, your options are um, inline relative, oh, here I can actually just do my, oops, and tell the sense. And here's proof that developers don't remember anything. Um, so these are your potential the absolute. So this is like, even when you scroll on the page, it won't move. Um, fixed is, oh wait, no. Absolute will scroll the page. It is just defined based on the browser window. It's not in relation to the other elements. Fixed is it will not scroll, even if you're scroll scrolling. Relative is based on the, where it normally would be. So that's what I just did. And static is normal. Sticky is based off the edge of a browser window. So if you have like a sticky footer, sticky header, that's how you do that. And that would be an inherent initial or just relative based on um, initials default. And Rachel, is sticky, is what the parent is. sticky like relatively new? Hey, I've never heard of that. Yeah, I believe like, so. I think that's in the latest um, yeah. updates. Sticky. 
Yeah, I think like that's, you know, obviously I haven't coded in like two and a half years. So sticky looks new to me. Mm -hmm. Rachel, yeah, what the web like, builders like, like web form, no code movement. You hate those people, right? You broke up when you said that. What was that? I said, what do you think about the web page builders and no code movement? Oh, so like WYSIWYG, like Wix and crap? <laughs> Guess I answered your question. Um, she said crap. Isn't Webform, is that, what's the company that does Web? Webflow. I know Webflow. Webflow. Webflow, that's what it is. Web, oh yeah, that's another one, yeah. Um, those, I mean, if you're doing something like a blog or something very, that's not going to have a ton of dynamic content and you're just like updating static content and all that means is just I'm writing a blog post and it's not going to do any like crazy stuff in the, the background. It's, it's not performing an action like a, like a web app would. It's, it's just a, a site. Um, it's fine for that kind of stuff. Um, but once you want to start customizing themes, once you want to start making your layouts and getting creative, it breaks. Yeah, you have to still know stuff, something about it to get to the harder stuff. Yeah. That's, that's that way forever. Remember Dreamweaver? <laughs> yeah, um, like I, was, I never used I was going to say, like, but... I've been told that, you know, are you afraid that you're going to lose your job? I've been told that since, like, 2000. <laughs> Like, they started saying that when um, like XD and Zeppelin and stuff started outputting code. You look at that code, it's garbage. Yeah, it is garbage. So uh, we're, I think we're pretty good. Uh, the developers are pretty good on there. Um, they're yeah, it's performance, <laughs> performance optimization. I think it, it makes sense if you're building a web page, go ahead, you know, use Wix. I think yeah. it's better, you know. If you, yeah, like if you're trying to, do something that's a uh, very dy dynamic, more like an app um, or a game or something like that. You definitely would, you, you couldn't in in those types of um, drag and drop UI builders. Chains of neurons ferry these signals to the brain, successfully propagating the stimulus according to characteristics. Such. That, that, I don't. I didn't fully get everything you just said. Sorry, can you repeat that? Que pedo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. A lot on positioning. Okay. Well, how much is this all is positioning? No, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the only thing that is done with positioning. So um, it's just because it's overlapped really is the reason you have to do it. And it's just relative based on where it originally was. Um, and then I think that, that, that that's it for that. And then let's go on to the next thing. So here we've got um, UX text. So all buttons that are just text buttons, these boring buttons here. Those just have a font size, some padding, and then the badge on this home one is, it's just a text bullet is all it is. It's, it's just another character that I made red and gave a margin, nothing that fancy. Um, and the reason I can um, give it a different style than what the home is, is because I wrapped it in this span element, which is a lot like a div, except it's, um, it's in a different display by default. So instead of being a block element, it's inline element. So it'll flow from left to right like text would versus um, the block display, it'll stack vertically on the page. Except buttons apparently are default inline. So otherwise you'd see that just the, all the buttons are stacked sideways when they're next to each other. I'll select, it's just a default collector, made it gray, no border, took the border away. Pretty basic, no background color anymore. Search bar, 
This is another one of those molecules, if you remember, but this doesn't look like a lot of styles, does it? Uh, it's because um, a lot of those styles are already, um, so the input, this field right here, the input field, the search your pins, that, well, I didn't click on it before, that looks ugly, but that um, is styled by this separately from the, I didn't nest it inside just for, because I did. Um, so yeah, just set, set the settings on those. Um, and then uh, because if you see here, the um, icon, the input field, and then the drop down are not all in one line here. I just added this display in my block to make it so they, they all look to the side instead of stacking. So yeah, the input, I just really made it look different and do anything. And then what you should never do, and what I did here because I wanted to show you a quick and dirty static one, is define a width of an element to fit the screen you're designing for. Because as long as you're at a thousand pixels, this looks okay. But once I start changing the size of the screen, you notice it's not behaving as any sane developer or designer would um, would would expect it to. All right. So now that I kind of went through this, um, how this is styled, do you have any other questions? Um, there was one. On? It was a. Oh, what? Yeah. What? I I I answered a little bit, and I think Danny did too. But what races? resources do you recommend for those new to web development? Okay, um, I actually have a, my last slide has a bunch of links for you. So just wait till the end. Um, um, all right. Okay, so I'll go on. Oh, please, and, what I said. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> one of the resources I have is a, um, a free course by Khan Academy. That's a, a good you've never touched code before, it, it'll get you started. Um, and it won't have you go through any of these, this gulp stuff, this pre-processing. It'll be the, how I learned how to code with static files that you edit and then open up in the browser and it doesn't refresh automatically like this beautifully does. Um, and you won't be able to use SAS and those kinds of things, so. But it's, it's, it's the place to start if, if you've never touched code because you understand what's the, what the basis is. All right, and then I have a bunch of links too. So. All right, so I'm gonna go move on from this ugly static version to a dynamic version based on Flexbox. Who's excited? No one? Come on. Flexbox. We said we were. Okay, yay. Very excited. That, was, that, was that Anna and Shan? I don't have the, yeah. um, okay, I don't have the, um, uh, but. Anna. The, Matt. Right. So, yeah, you, because that is the static version. I just pulled away our styles away. So this is the exact same HTML code, just with different styles. And let it refresh. Oh, wait, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Come on, why isn't it working? The lights aren't twinkling, Clark. Flex example. That was a reference to. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. A Christmas bakery thing. I want to know if you knew that. Wait, this, sorry, this is the wrong set of styles. Did I accidentally delete my other one? <laughs> Crap. You're gonna start ripping apart. I hope that's not the case. Um, let's see, where would I put those? Definitely not in this one. This is a generated file. Header. I see yeah, how that's right. So this is the right HTML. 
For those wanting to get into development, this is your life, your future. Yeah, that's a body. I must have somehow, at some point, Where did I put that code? Did I delete it? Yeah, Command Z is the best. Why is it not working? Um, It might have been when I was, let's hope my undo goes far enough back. It might have been when I uncommented, I deleted the whole block. Nice. You are working yeah. in a very tiny window. Yeah, I'm gonna make that bigger. Usually a developer would have multiple displays um, because this is a presentation. Yeah, one that tiny laptop screen is what I'm working on. Invest in many monitor. I was going to say, it looks like you're developing on an iPad or something. <laughs> this is a laptop. Yeah, I just oh, have man. it on a laptop. Yeah. Seriously, where did it go? Who would have thought I needed version control on a presentation file? It's still not there. Like, this was, no, this is. This is body flex example. I have an example, or I did at some time. Maybe I just will undo all this stuff because I'm going undoing things that I need to show you later. Yeah, okay, so this is good enough. Um, all right, so let's do this manually how much time do we have actually we're good okay like like how much time is what i, I ask start killing themselves because of this i'm sure <sighs> um i so this is supposed to go to what 7 30 is that two hours is that my max yeah yeah good. okay okay so i'm good still yeah. um so uh, if we want to change this to be a flex view, what we need to do is, first of all, get rid of all of the width definitions. Oh, oh that, that badge, I'm going to keep that where it is. Here's one, 550 on the search yep, bar. Here. Yep, search bar, that's the most important one. And we do not want to get rid of all of these. Well, this this um, yep. won't be that anymore. That'll change when we're doing a flex layout. Uh, da, 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 did I miss anything? I think that's it. Okay, yeah, so then this is the only other one. So instead of making these, did anything change here? I feel like, all right, so this would be what? And flex is fairly new too, right? I mean, that's a. Yeah, this is maybe three years old ish. Don't quote me on that. Um, so this is making this. I'm going to fix my screen again so you can really see. Um, yeah, that's enough. Okay, so the. Sorry, second one. This this element, the, the parent nav, now has a display um, as flex. Um, that just means it's a, it's a different setting. Um, I'll explain exactly what that means, and you'll hopefully understand by the time I get done here. We want the um, direction. Oh wait, wait, wait. Sorry, I do not that, but. I want it here. 
here. Sorry about that. I'm wondering why that was going weird. It's basically. Then, yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's it's at least side to side now as we wanted. Um, and then there's a bunch of different flex properties you can add. So um, by default, flex wrap is, um, I'd say it's no wrap or that's by default, but we don't want our stuff to wrap. We just want it to shrink. Um, if you notice here, did I thought this would shrink up. Did I not change a size somewhere? Oh wait, it's because we're in flex now. It's growing to fit the screen. However, the oh gosh, the let's see where it is bigger. Is it because you're using pixels? Oh, this is on some of these. Yeah, so um, it's not growing to this. It's weird. Okay, because when I was doing this earlier, the um, search your pins, this input button or input field was uh, shrinking, which I'm not sure why it's not now. That's just all I'm confused about. Okay, so if it's not shrinking, that's fine. We'll just work around it. Um, so we have just flex display with no wrap. I know we're going to have all of our chill. Oh, wait, before we do that, we'll align. So let's align content. We will align our content to be centered. And we, okay, you don't really see how that changed really. But what it did is it aligned all of our um, things to be, um, if you had a horizontal straight line, it would make all of your items center aligned to that, which doesn't look like it did. Um, the reason for that is like this, this element right here. And it's, come on, I'm gonna highlight it. That element, it is centered. This element, or I guess the parent of that, that is centered. So again, these boxes, whether they're visible or invisible in these cases, are being treated the way they should. Um, you just need to figure out why they're being treated differently um, or why they're displaying differently. Well, they're still being treated the same. Uh, okay. All right, well, this is kind of taking longer than I was expected. Um, I do have another flex example I'll show you instead of this. Just know that we edit some code so this will, this center X section will eventually grow. Um, I want these um, flex. Does display flex yeah. makes make the whole thing responsive? Yeah. Okay. So this is the I, the, the alignment will be a little messy because of like what I just showed you, but this is kind of one way to make it work. It's not the necessarily intended, but you can see that it's growing and shrinking with the page now. Um, so there's a way to uh, like so this is making each of the items grow. And then uh, an other way you can do it is with, that's, that's applying grow to each item. And then this would be a way to say how you want your spacing between the items, regardless of what size they are, if they're set to grow or shrink or whatnot. And that is um, justify items. And that one we can say, I want, uh, space around. Oh, wait, so maybe it's justify content. Sorry. Oh, wait, then I think it's a line items. These are like random weird. There we go. A line items. Rachel, okay. did you have to did you have to define flex wrap or what happens if you don't have a flex wrap? Uh, so this actually no wrap is by default, but I can alternatively do a uh, wrap and it will just like when you get text that is 
too long for the the page it goes to the next line got it okay and everything wraps there's a couple others um there's like wrap reverse you saw that will make it wrap opposite so like right to left how right to left text would wrap it wraps above instead of below i guess not right to left it just wraps going up instead of down it's on the same word just this 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 that so goes this way so it's still left to right but it's from bottom to top instead of top to bottom that's cool i just define that because um, it is there even though it's default property so i wanted space between here there's also a so that makes every space between each item the same. So all of these space measurements should be the same. And then there's also space around, which makes, I'm gonna update a little bit. Um, so if you notice it got a little narrower, that's because instead of making this space and this space and this space all the same, what it's doing is saying that the space around this item is the same as the space around this item. So this space here is twice as big as this space here. Does that make sense? Same over here. So this space over here is like one unit and this would be two units, two units, two units because each item adds the space on each side of it. And so between two items, it'll double. So that's the difference between space between and space around. Um, those are commonly used and there's also I use the gray one, but I'll sh that that'll be more apparent in my other example what that does. What would you say are any cons to using flex? When would you not use flex? If you want things to be vertically aligned, really pretty, and it's very dynamic content, and you'll you'll see an example of that in a minute. Yeah, I never use flex to like obviously as much, so I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, so I have like uh, a couple examples with between flex and bootstrap and I'll, I'll get into those unless there's more questions. Yeah, I'll what, open up the chat and look. What about as, uh, CSS grid? Uh, do you think uh, you could just CSS grid instead of flex or are they in any um, just uh, CSS grid is more like bootstrap as far as I'm aware. Um, the bootstrap grid that it's a column based grid i believe i actually really haven't used a lot of css grid and that was one thing i was gonna add into this presentation but because of my procrastination i didn't Ooh. quite get to yeah has, so. has anybody used css grid that could answer that yeah crickets That can be something we Google at the end of this if there's time. How's that? Yeah. So like that was <laughs> like somebody's like like what's a good resource? Google. Yeah. And stack, I mean, that's stack always, overflow. Yep. It's like I have a need. Always. How do I code it? Like, right. Let me go look for it. And I think the question was from an absolute beginner. Where would you start? Right. I think, and that's where I had that um. The. Yeah, like the oh, question no. earlier that Don't was you like, worry. look at still this see. course it's a pretty good course i i still see beginners to experts googling because you can't know everything that that is very true there's um, a lot of copy and pasting happening and like i said if if you notice developers don't know everything it seems daunting but it auto fills like i got all my options I feel like I used grid back in older versions of Bootstrap. different grid, different grid. Oh, it is. Oh. Yeah, it's a responsive grid that's built into CSS now. It's a newer thing. Yeah, then I. I, I know that much about it. I've never, I've never really worked with it. Unfortunately, I've always used like Bootstrap or some Flexbox based framework. I've never actually used the default CSS because I think that came out after those projects I was working on. I know lately everyone's asking for a bootstrap or something that comes with a whole bunch of um, working components. 
All right. Um, okay, so I think I'll just go on to the part two of the demo that's no longer about this Pinterest nav bar. Comment out my stuff. And try not to delete anything this time. Get rid of all the nav bar stuff. And that's and the header. Don't need that file with them anymore. So I'll go into Flexbox first. We got um, like two versions of it. So I'll go through the first one here. Um, so this is, oh, I'll get rid of that on this guy too, so you can see things better. And a little more space. I know I just need to uncomment my styles that actually control flex. So the static example gets commented away in a second. And we will see our flex. Oops. Uh, it's a multi line comment, so you can't use the keyboard shortcut. There we go. All right, so here's a flex example. Perfect. So here you got a bunch of different size things. Okay. And um, if we look at the style, where is it? I'm going to actually, I'll just leave it out because it's fine, but it's not collapsed. Um, so here, the free size stuff. And you see kind of like how I said, if it, you're trying to do something where everything's aligned and all the sizes are dynamic or just irregular, uh, it may not look how you want it to. And I'll just kind of walk through what it's doing here. So. So this is the gray background is the container. And there's these seven items in it. And they all have different size heights attached to them. And their text controls the width, right? Everyone with me so far? The spacing I have set here is space around. So you can see where I was saying there's this space it's half as big as this space. And all of the middle ones are the same. And then the end space over here is the same as this edge space over here. And that is because of the space around. So this object has that space applied to this side and this side. And this object has that same space applied to this side and this side. And it's, it's dynamic. So it'll that space will grow as the page grows. Okay, so it's as big as I can get, but it'll shrink as the page shrinks until it has to wrap. And in this example, I do have it set to wrap. I have it set to align items by center. Okay, so now we kind of get how that works. I'll show you those settings in code. Uh, so here we've got, and this is just for spacing layout. That, that means that's just the space above here. That means nothing. Um, so this UX container, is set on, I'll just boost this over here so you can see what I'm actually pointing at, it is set to this outside div. And it's gray, it has flex. It is in row direction. You also can use flex column. Um, fewer use cases for that, but sometimes it's useful. Um, align to center, like I said, it's aligning to the center line of the row. And it's just defining things by having space around them. So the space is half of this space. The space is half of this space. And we are wrapping it because you can see it's two lines now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It goes in order like you read. Um, and you can also see that I have, um, oh, just on each of these elements, there's some padding just so the text is go right up to the edge and each of these individual ones. So one is aptly named by style one, one and one, two and two, three and three. So that's um, just to keep things straight as I'm demoing this to you guys. 
I made heights all different. That's how you can see that um, center alignment really well. And I just did the colors for fun. Um, any questions on this so far before I start changing settings and blow your mind on how Flexbox is amazing? I already see why it's amazing, Rachel. Okay, well, like, this is wait. Because like, <laughs> like for reference, for if I were to have to create this, right, I'd have to line, like I'd have to like do some breakpoints to bring things down and and then I'd have to wrap five, six and seven with another div so that yeah. when it comes to mobile, like it just like reduces the amount of code and, and it just basically does the math for you. Yeah, so this so, is, yeah. It, yeah, it's very dynamic. It, it'll it stretch and grow things if you want them to. So let's yeah. say, it's like, for example, the six, it's really narrow. I want that one to be bigger. So I just find the six and I can apply a rule to this so that I want it to grow. So I'm gonna flex grow and you give it a number. Um, so now it's growing and it's pushing five and seven to the edge. It's now the widest thing when it was the narrowest thing. What is the significance of the number on flex grow? Like we've seen one, what is like flex grow two or three? Uh, yeah, so that's a ratio based numbering system. So if I give six a one and I give uh, well, actually, let's give six a bigger number because it's gen generally lower or a, a smaller thing. So that didn't change anything because that's the only number. But if I give seven a flex grow, flex grow. So is it of, setting priority? One. No, it's not priority. They'll still grow. Yeah. Um, but the amount that they grow bigger. See, um, the content of six would end here. And so you've got this big extra space. That's actually four times as big as this extra space that seven added to it. So you've got that four to one ratio, see four okay. to one ratio. Cool. Um, how um, predictable is uh, Flexbox like on other browsers? Like, d can you make something and then like forget it and it'll look great or Will it be horrible on something or, you know, not, not quite right. Like pixel perfect. Um, so Flexbox is a, it's, it's a, yeah. So it to your first question, all the browsers treat it the same. You shouldn't have a problem with that. Um, if you're trying to make things pixel perfect, uh, Flexbox is dynamic. It's not never going to be pixel perfect unless you're at that exact size. It's, it's meant to be dynamic and to grow as needed or to shrink as needed or to wrap as needed. Cool, thank you. Yeah. And that, um, that go, I just shared like another resource that, that you can use. It's can I, can I use com. It'll tell you yeah, what the resource. support is. Thank you, Danny. Yeah. yeah, that's a good resource. That's for any, um, uh, that's basically browser support for stuff. Um, so again, see, you can see this space here is this is one fourth of this. And because these are the only two elements that have grow to it, you still see that these are, are set to that parent from the container, that rule of space around. And then once I, now they're, they're all yeah. stretching because this one grows as much as it possibly can. And then there's no room for these five to have space around them anymore. Yeah. And then, you know, like I would like the ratio is like pretty key. Like that's important. That's so cool. I'd mm -hmm. have to, yeah. like in regular before flex, I'd have to do some crazy padding magic right. percentage yeah. thing to do ratio. Yeah. And it's, it's good to note um, that it's the padding or like the extra space that is the ratio and not the size of the, mm. the element itself. So you Got can see it. like this is what maybe a little over a third of the size of purple, even though it's set to be one fourth and not one third. Cool. That's the extra space is the, the amount of growth is, is what the ratio refers to. Um, 
So yeah, that's uh, some cool stuff there. I have another example where everything's more about the same size, but I'll, I'll get some alignment stuff before I, I just decided to get ahead of myself there a second. Okay, so instead of doing space around, I guess I we got space between. This won't change too much in this layout, how it is, but you see that the edge is now edge to edge and you just got the space between, not around. So all these spacings are equal. And then once you get one of those grow objects, or other way, sorry, grow objects, and now you lose the space because the six is growing as much as it possibly can, and then seven takes up all the space it can, which is everything. All right, um, and then I'll do some alignment options. So this is, you're seeing center here. You can pretty clearly see that everything's aligned, centered, right? It's pretty common. Um, tool even in designing to align to center, usually vertically centered, but not horizontally centered, in, at least anyway. Uh, but you can also um, say, I want it to be at the start. I guess it's called start. So that just pushes everything up to the top of the row. So see, as we wrap here, the seven aligns to the um, highest point it can based on the content in the row above it. So we can also put this here. And those are growing again. And leaving these guys, these first five, with their default padding, where six and seven have extra padding to the right. Okay, what else did I want to show? Flex start, we got flex end. Guess what that does? Pushes everything down. Surprising, right? But there's a lot of control on this too. I'm just gonna, for example, um, just for the, I already talked about the grow stuff, so I'll get rid of that for now. Um, so everything, all the children have the same setting now. So we got the space between. I can also do justify content instead of space between. I can have as the grower stretch. Stretch, yeah, stretch. So everything will fill the available width where it should. I thought it was supposed to. Uh, there we go. Um, oh, I forgot to show you space again. So that um, makes all the spaces, even on the outside, the same. So instead of having the space between where they're all shoved, the two end ones are shoved over all the way to the end, we now have this equal space between and around on the end, even though the space around isn't causing that double space here to be, you know, this, this space be double the space. There's space evenly, space around, and space between. Okay, so all, if there's no more questions, I'll jump over to my slightly different layout. And then all this is, is it's showing that when things are the roughly the same width, um, your wrapping principles, don't always align the way you would necessarily want them to. You see you've got some weird alignment stuff going on here. Like if you wanted everything to be lined up in a grid, it, um, I think this is more apparent, sorry. Second, when are two little, and our, all of our items are, growing. It, it doesn't look like a grid. If you want it to be a grid, it's hard to make flex blocks align to a grid. In fact, almost impossible. Even if you have hmm. an even number of items, let's yeah. just say I'll get rid of seven here for a second. So like for a designer, like what does that mean, right? Like mm -hmm. I've heard you sometimes tell people we can't do that because that's 
we're using Plex. Yeah, it's usually what does just that mean? so um, I'm trying to here we go. This is like a mobile view. Um, so if you're using Flex and you want things to wrap like Flex, you would have to, you, you, I mean, Flex wraps are different than the breakpoints and bootstraps when you apply um, co like column widths to things. And, and I'll, I'll get into this a little more when we actually talk about the bootstrap stuff. But you see here this like yellow and purple like doesn't align right. It, um, and this green wouldn't align with that red and orange okay. intersection either. So if you wanted things to wrap and look like a grid, yeah, that, that's not gonna happen. Um, at least not without some crazy, crazy custom code that takes a lot to develop. Yeah. So if, like, if that's what you want, you have to weigh the cost of those development hours with the value of that experience and that look. Um, so, so, it's, 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 it, so are you setting the width for each individual item or is it inherited based on the text inside? I guess that's a... So it's, um, it's relative to the content size. Yeah, okay. So, so for like, like these, like these are roughly the same size of content, right? It's, it's two characters. No. But this one is narrower than this four. Yeah. So when these are set to grow at the same rate, this padding space is all equal. Yeah. But that padding space is different than this padding space because these numbers are wider together than these numbers are. Because we got this one is this little narrow thing mm -hmm. and four, five, and six are all wide. So it, if your content, you can guarantee your content is all going to be the exact same in scale at the exact same rate, Flexbox will work. Um, but again, it, it's really, you can make anything happen in development. It's just a matter of the work and customization that has to go into it. Is it worth it to do that? Or do you want to use something differently? And that's, um, you're hitting the nail on the head, Danny, with kind of the, the intent of this this presentation here it's like you know i'm i want to do this oh, sorry i'm i want to make the width again come on there we go all right any other questions comments all right do you know anybody that's using flex in the wild like what? probably a lot um, it's something that when you see it working, you don't notice it. I notice when people are using bootstrap grid more because of the breakpoints and how, how things drastically change over a very little adjustment. Um, but I mean, you can set breakpoints on anything. It's just bootstrap uses them, um, quite a lot. And that's, that's part of how, how it works. So you notice it when, when things shift drastically when you're using website rather than slowly and then, oh, it changes and then that grows. Yeah. So, um, or if you're getting there where things start stacking and it's not all shifting, like the whole layout changes and not just things moving around. Um, that's more of a bootstrap kind of um, experience. And for most, most people aren't gonna be resizing the browser dynamically, they'll be viewing it on a tablet with a fixed width, or they'll be viewing it on a desktop full screen. It's usually like people don't look at a site and then, oh, what does it do? Like people don't really browse the web like that. Like, some developers do, some designers do, but normal person probably doesn't. I think it also depends on your use case, right? Like, cause I'm a student. And we're, you know, we're doing things from remote right now. And so um, our book, which is like a remote, you know, some, some web page that has an HTML or has a HTML book on it, um, doesn't like being squished down to this size on the side, right? Like, but it, it, it should, it's just text. Like why it doesn't it like it. And that's the kind of thing that yeah. really, really bugs me when I'm, when I'm looking at websites. And then, and then developers who are looking at those go into the dev tools. 
and adjust the styles here and it shows up on a live website. Wait, what? Yeah, so if you have DevTools open, uh -huh. I can, I can like, like print it here, let's go to Facebook here. So let's say I want this button. I don't you want just, this to be blue. You just leveled, I want to change it to Brent purple. Up. <laughs> yeah, I want to change this button to purple. So uh -huh. let's see. Um, it looks like this is high enough. Um, background, color. Ooh, I just made all the wow. purple. But yeah, you can you can address stuff um, in a live site. You're just editing the, the text and browser is reading it. Does that persist over um uh no uh, as soon as you re oh, as soon sad. as you refresh the page or change the page, <laughs> it, it blows it away. But like for your textbook issue, yeah. if it's if it's in a just a layout doesn't like being yeah. squished, you can change the width of the layout just here. Oh okay. that, so it, it'll grab that, the text. The little trick is really neat, especially if you're modifying an existing application or if you're like on crunchy roll and you want to to get around yeah. the um the, the so, yeah. ads and stuff you can delete the ad blocks yeah that's that anyone does that <laughs> <laughs> and, but uh but yeah like for like instead of having to rebuild this and some kind of, or taking a screenshot and then recreating the button you can just change the color of the button or you can add something to it so it's kind of neat. And then I'll add to that. I actually uh, cheated at my, like oh, my speeding ticket, like using the code to skip the timer. You know, like when you're taking tests or something, there's a timer to make sure you read it. No and way. Like, yeah, so you can, just, you like, can add a JavaScript in this. I just went in there and, and changed the timer. Stuff. Yeah, I would change it from like five minutes right. to like 10 seconds and let it go down or five seconds and then just take the test. Wow. So generally uh, an hour test took me like 15 minutes. <laughs> so oh, definitely not using your powers for good. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> I'm still doing that. Yeah. So, yeah. so and I, just to demonstrate, so I, I changed it where the, the button back and colors actually fit. If I refresh this page, it, oh, it wipes okay. out any changes. Bummer. Yeah. So don't refresh. Stay on the page forever. Now I need to know. <laughs> Never turn off your computer. Like I need I need to know why this is so value valuable for I will I don't necessarily okay. So I don't I think Crunchyroll changed their website, but this was like years ago. You could um there's uh, like certain streaming sites use the same plugin or whatever to, to stream their videos and display ads. I don't know if it was like uh, the ad program or whatever it was, but you could literally go into the, the um, source and just delete the ads so they're not yeah. distracting. Yeah, that too. Okay. All right. By the way, I got you guys all curious and actually seeing the value of learning some web code. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, let's, uh, so everyone think they got a pretty good handle on how um, Flexbox works before I go into the bootstrap demo, like the, the grid, I guess demo, it's not just the full bootstrap, it's just the grid. I can't right hear anything. Nope, I'm nope, gonna nope, go, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. Anna said it was okay. I think that was Anna. It was me. I was okay. told this was your presentation, so I got to keep, keep it to a minimum. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I, I did this so quick and I made all this content. I coded this, these, all these demo things, at least to give me time to show them, right? <laughs> um, and then I just need to... So it's you're already kind of seeing what's happening here, even though I haven't um, uncommented my code, my styles, because Bootstrap is built in here. So the um, the classes I've added to this this chunk of code um, is already taking effect. And the only thing that I really did was so you can see the edge of things. I just made some color changes, added some padding. Doesn't look too fancy, but it'll, it'll hopefully explain a few things. So in Bootstrap, there's two ways to define a grid container. 
and there's fluid and then there's just a normal container. The fluid one's the new one. It's uh, more flex-like than the regular container. I'm saying flex-like, it's not using flex. It's, it's just, um, it's full width basically, it's fluid is what they, the term they use to describe the, the responsive, how it grows. Oh, that was a great point. Um, come on, there we are. So how it, I guess, it shrinks. So this will stay full width and this one will kind of jog to different container size with different um, margins on the edges. Oh, there's a break one again. So really, I'm just kind of showing that one break one. So here, if you see that the margins change when this, when I, when I stretch it, you'll see these margins change and these content columns all stay the same size. But then this fluid one, these columns grow with the browser window width. So I'll just drag this over slowly. So hopefully you can see how that's working. It takes a little while for the UI to catch up when the browser the um, dev tools are running. All right, so you get in how the container kind of works, the difference between the containers. Any questions on that? All right. I have a question. So it's just, oh yeah, go, go for it. With the, the breakpoints thing, where are you defining, are you defining these breakpoints or I don't know. Uh, not... Bootstrap, yeah, Bootstrap has default ones um, and they're defined by like t-shirt sizes. So you have like extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, ginormous, which is like for TVs. Um, it's not actually called ginormous. Um, it's just double XO. Um, but that's really all you'd use it for. Anyway, uh, yeah, so you can, override those defaults though. So if you have a specific, like my site works like 20 pixels larger than your breakpoint and it's, like, it's just not working, the, the developer can go in and change the breakpoint to, to adjust for like say your, your horizontal logo is just not working with your, your menu icon or whatever you can, you can adjust it. So it'll, um, It'll shift view, like, I don't know, shift layout, I guess, based on that new size and not the browser or not browser, uh, bootstrap default. Gotcha. So I guess my question more like uh, you define it in the CSS or? Um, oh, um, uh, so it's, yeah, breakpoints are defined in CSS. Um, I'm not defining them in my example here. I'm just using the default ones, but if you did want to um, define your own, it's a boots or it's a, a SAS variable you update, um, and that's that's similar to how we showed at the very beginning the colors. Oh, sorry, it's CSS. So like how we define these, this is a, a variable. Gotcha. Um, and it's actually this isn't actually an object, but it would be like. I don't know what it's called, but you would like overwrite this variable with. Um, um, don't be afraid to open up the SAS files, Rachel. Go find them. Breakpoint a whatever equals, uh, you know, into 256 pixels instead of whatever. It, it would just replace this value with whatever their value is because everything they do is modular and you can update it. Very cool, customized bootstrap. That's, um, I, I don't wanna scare people away by opening up bootstrap SAS files, Danny. Well, no, I think, I think the, <laughs> the, the difference between, like the difference between this example and the example you were doing with, you were actually doing the code, right? In SAS, whereas like now we moved to bootstrap, which is a framework and it yeah, has- Look at all this code brings, that's already pre-written yeah. for you that you can just use. Um, yeah, there's the bootstrap grid. <laughs> Where is it's the, the oh, grid right here? Yeah. Yeah. So that's so here. Uh, let's see here. Okay, that's just a bunch of mix ins. That's not, that's actually not variables. I think there's this separate variables file. Yeah, right here. All right, so uh, this is where they define all the colors. This is where they define all their shades. Um, more colors, colors, fill colors, just. Yeah. Um, so the default means that it can be overridden or overridden. 
Um, we've got Would you need um, four different resolutions for this from a designer? Does it help? Um, I, yeah. Some developers probably would want it. I personally don't need it. That's where you have a conversation. Okay. Um, talk to your developers. I think if you had a good design system, if you had a good design system, you should, shouldn't have to. Um, the only yeah. time I provide another breakpoint if is if I'm changing my layout, right? So if you're going from something like this to like your wrapping yeah. columns, yeah, you change at the point where it changes, like here, that would be another change. Yeah. yeah. Like I would definitely explore it. I wouldn't ignore it because then you there could be some space thin issues or where you have to like change your layout so that it looks good or hide something. Um, yeah. Here, breakpoints. Found them. Those are default breakpoints. All right. Uh, so you can uh, override these with this, this variable. You can just define this in your, um, your, your, uh, here, your, your, SAS code that overrides bootstrap. And when you do that, you have to delete this default. Um, this, this just means that um, uh, the priest processor knows that these are meant to be replaced when that is um, deleted. Otherwise it will use these. I think I said that backwards. So when this is present, it will use these unless you delete this and provide other values. If you just provide other values, there's no guarantee that you'll get the intended effect. Right, that's a- oh, thank you. Of, yeah, that's a higher level um, uh, discussion that you'll probably get into much later in learning how to develop. Um, like I said, crash course. Um, thanks for the questions. Yeah, this is, this is great. I'm sure we're learning more than I had intended. Um, okay, so where was I? Um, oh yeah, I was just about to show you the different breakpoints and how those are defined in, or how those are accessed. Cause I'm just using bootstrap styles or not styles, um, classes. These are all bootstrap classes. Um, so to start at the beginning, we've got our container. So the thing that holds the rows and then I have in this top part, two rows defined. Uh, this one and this one. So there's both the two that are highlighted there. Um, I just put this um, text here so you can see the the um, like when it does wrap, where the those end and the next one starts. Otherwise, it just looks like a mess of columns. You can't really see what's going on. Um, all right, so you got container row, and then we've got all these columns. Um, and this is where the t-shirt sizing thing I mentioned comes in. We've got, um, so extra small is just nothing actually. It's just, otherwise it'd be like, like that. But because it's the base one that if you have nothing else applied, it applies to everything. They just omit that, I guess, just pack to whoever at Bootstrap made the decision. I don't know, I don't know why. Um, and then we get small screens. So this is like extra small mobile size. This would be like a big phone. This is your run of the mill tablet or small laptop usually. And large is where you get into like a full screen um, laptop, larger display. Um, I didn't go any higher than that because I'm not on a laptop right now. So. That's really as far as I went. Um, so does that like naming at least make sense? You understand when when these are applied. But these are controlled by the the breakpoints, and um, this is smallest, small, medium, large, Oops, large. So it'll change how many columns it takes up um, as designers. Um, at some point, you'll probably come across the bootstrap grid if you haven't already, if you haven't used it yet. Um, as 
12 column base and these numbers just say how many columns that item will take up. So on the smallest, so that's these where I say everything is 12 for this top part. And then this lower part, it's six, six, 12. So if there's 12 columns, six columns is half of that, right? So these take up half the screen. So six, six, 12. Does everyone follow? And then this fluid at the bottom is exactly, the, I have the exact same um, classes applied to these. It's just a different container. So if anyone's um, wondering about that. And then once I get to the next breakpoint, you'll see it'll shift. Yep, there we go. There's our, I guess it's more like a small tablet. I don't think any phone's that large. But um, here's another shift. So this is when we're using these values, these small values. So this uh, small values. So these six and these 336. So here we got six, half of the 12, six, another half. And another half. So this is where um, Bootstrap, Grids, and Flexbox change because when you have these, um, they, they they don't. So if you are working with Bootstrap and you wanted all of these to be the same as small and then you want them to wrap, you get equal, 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 or you could do equal, equal 12, like we did earlier on over here, you got equal, equal, full. So you'd have to define that based on these sizing um, classes. And then we get to the next one here, next breakpoint, you'll see, but this is where they're all four, Four is a third of 12, so they're all equally um, distributed. And then I set on just this first column here for when it gets to bigger, I made that a two instead of four. So let's see if you can notice how that happens. And you don't have to fill up all 12 columns, you see, you got this empty space over here. Um, Using bootstrap grid sometimes does make it um, more difficult to uh, to adjust layouts if you're trying to to make something like oh I found out that this column is too narrow at the bottom of the breakpoint like right before it shifts to the the other view when the screen gets smaller. I, you, your columns are the width of your columns. You can't really adjust those. You can't say, I want something to be two and a half columns. That doesn't exist. Um, it, it has to click to the grids, but that does make it um, a grid, right? You can align things vertically. Any questions, comments, concerns about this? Danny, peanut gallery, anyone that want to chime in at all? I had a question about like, um, is it is it super, super necessary to learn something like uh, Bootstrap or can you get by with just CSS and HTML? Um, you can definitely get by with just CSS and HTML. Um, I would recommend looking at the responsive frameworks that are out there um, just to, um, to, because a lot of um, larger like enterprise level apps will rely on things like this because um, those frameworks also give you uh, components and like a start of a, a, a design system that you can take advantage of. Okay. Uh, if you're starting from scratch with just HTML and CSS, um, there's nothing wrong with that. It, um, and as a beginner, I would actually suggest that so you understand how everything is happening. Um, but once you get to the point where you, you, you need to do something really cool really quick, um, utilizing something like the bootstrap, um, I guess it is really a design system and the 
uh, your flex box layouts will help you a lot. And you can you can nest a flex box layout in a bootstrap grid. There's nothing against that. If I wanted to, I could let me hide this out of my room. I could take this whole row here. And instead of using columns, I could just replace this row class with some custom class that does Flexbox. So now this whole section here is flex based. Okay. Even though I'm still using Bootstrap and these are like, so I can still use columns here. Cool. Thank you. Do you think that or that's I could like use flex common? inside a column. Sorry, like, I'm just second. wondering. Like, do you, do you see, like, again, going to the wild, like, do you see them using that, like only using certain elements with flex and, but the whole site is kind of, you know, still using a framework, but they just move to flex for certain areas. I mean, I don't really like inspect websites in my free time. I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> um, I, I might start doing it now do. that I know that I can like, you know, mess with yeah. everything. That's pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah. Sometimes knowledge is power. Other times it's, <laughs> it's overwhelming. Um, I just, I just know that I've been, I have, you know, obviously I've been on projects, not projects. I've heard people that were on projects where they were told you can't do that because it's, we're using flex. And it's like, well, you know, I, I haven't I haven't developed in flex using flex, but it just makes me feel like maybe that's yeah. just is that true or or not? But, um so I would say if you're using bootstrap, you can definitely use flex. But yeah. if you're using flex, uh incorporating a grid might be more overhead than the developer wants to do. Okay. Um and now that CSS has its own grid, um built in, it shouldn't be as much of a problem as it used to be. Yeah. Uh, you just might need to tell them, hey, look into CSS grid. <laughs> See what you can do with that. Yeah. And that might be all that they're just not aware of it. But I did want to add something to Brent's question is like from a from from an enterprise level, a lot of organizations they want to use a framework mm -hmm. like bootstrap. Um, or any other framework because it it's an abstraction and then like it's a scalable there's documentation you can yeah. hand it off to a brand new person and say just follow this pattern um, but i still think it's good for you to understand how css yeah. and html work so yeah so there's all these docs and in addition to the the, the grid layout stuff there's components built in, like just available to you. So buttons, so all these button styles. You've yeah. got um, modals. Um, I guess there really isn't a, oh, here, there's an example. So you've got this modal example. Oh, so that's why so many websites look so, so, yeah. so similar. Yep. Yeah, bootstrapification. Well, there's ways to customize bootstrap, like Rachel's kind of showing you some of that. Um, mm -hmm. So I would definitely learn how to do like SCSS and SAS and um, uh, like the, what, what would you call it? Like component, like I can't think of the name, but a framework based development, like Angular yeah. or React or something like that. Well, yeah, that'd be a development framework. Um, yeah. yeah, so that, that's more like for code modularization. Um, Bootstrap can work with any of those. Yeah. Um, Bootstrap is just this like style sheets in JavaScript. To, to make components. So like if we have input here. Yeah, but if you're looking to get into like a development team, Brent, mm -hmm. like a team, let's say all you do is focus on CSS, you're gonna need to know how that structure and that environment works. Yeah. Um, so definitely SAS, SCSS, um, and understanding how, how do you serve up CSS and HTML through a framework like Bootstrap or Foundation or something like that. Cool. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Would be ideal. Yeah, and if you yeah, if you wanted to really get into something like customizing Bootstrap, make your own Bootstrap theme. People sell Bootstrap themes. You can make side huh. money doing stuff like that. Cool. Thank you. So, like, even if you're just meddling, if you make something cool, you might 
you know, makes money off of it. Who knows? Awesome. I'm just getting kind of like, uh, discouraged <laughs> from like, you know, you're, you're like in school and you're getting, you're doing all the things that you have to do for school. And then now you realize there's even more that you have to do before you can actually have a job in this space. You know, it's, it's a, it's a bit discouraging. Um, Cause I don't think, I don't think my school has a class that has bootstrap in it. I'll have to, I'll have to look through and see. Um, it would but, probably I mean, be I like a responsive web. It'd probably be called something like responsive web. Okay. Responsive web. Okay. I'll look that up. Thank you. I think you'll always find that you have to learn more, more, and more every day. Yeah. You... <laughs> but, but like to get your foot in the door. <laughs> yeah. No, you can still get your foot in the door. Yeah. Don't get discouraged. Like somebody, uh, uh, Daniel, well, just said that. Like, definitely do not get discouraged. Thank you. Um, I, I, yeah, it's, it's, I, I came from like, um, I, I did web design in, like 2000s like from 2000 2005 like kind of at the height of the browser wars when like you had to use mm -hmm. every trick in the book to be able to like center something and yeah. like um uh, you know it, it just i was I completely to get rounded corners in netscape versus oh my god IE. yeah I, know. I actually i actually wrote a um uh, <laughs> a system that like made rounded corners with like yeah. proper edges and everything but it like it, it i called it needlepoint and so it was basically yeah. like um one by one um uh <laughs> spacer gifts that yeah. like cu yes. like curved yeah. the edges and stuff yeah yep. but you'd end up with like this table that was just insane it would never load because it was so yeah. big and um, these kids don't know how well they have it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how i feel yeah. in this class that i'm in but like on this at the same time in this class like um you know i i keep thinking oh yeah i know how to do that and then like i find out oh this has been deprecated because html5 <laughs> like yeah. um like image align and things like that just like don't exist any longer <laughs> um it's kind of weird um but yeah i want i want to try uh getting into the space and and uh i do want to um I, I i love learning like learning like lifelong learning is a big thing for me um it's just that back then i was like wanted to burn every everything i every book i had on css yeah. and html <laughs> because they were also contradictory and then uh, ie would come out with something and blow everything up and uh, yeah. yeah i think I that's why i'm like that officially microsoft deprecated <laughs> ie i am yay so yeah. now so that you have just have to use edge but that's basically chrome so yeah it's basically chrome that's fine i i can deal with that and now like everything basically updates itself so like you don't have to really worry so much about like stuff being outdated um which is great because uh, <laughs> i just i hated having to support you know garbage when netscape was around and, and you can just use netscape <laughs> and use css and things are great yep i might have my o'reilly book sitting around somewhere all, <laughs> like the big old thing of css tricks and all that i, I learned stuff i learned from an html book uh, uh html for dummies in 1999 and <laughs> um wrote it was actually I I really, that book it was a really great website once I finished, finally finished it. It was, um, it was pretty amazing uh, for the time. And uh, it used CSS and it, it didn't scale, but we didn't need to worry about that because nobody had, you know, like the best monitor you had was like, what, 980 <laughs> pixels or something. Yeah, you, just, you just make everything this wide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and to hell with the, the space over there and the space over there. It's fine. Nobody has a monitor that big. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you just left a line that, that, that thing. Yep. Yep, or, yep. I guess if you're looking at me this way, but yeah, you or you use a background it. image that like that made the background made that side look like it was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what school are you going to? Uh City College of San Francisco. Oh, cool. I found you all on Meetup um uh because we were um we were assigned um go find a meetup, uh, but you know, COVID. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, and, uh, so I found y'all and, um, I suggested it to some of my classmates. I don't know if they came. Um, yeah. but, uh, it was, I, I think this was really, really useful. I took a ridiculous number of notes. Um, wow. six I'm pages glad worth someone notes. learned something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is all like very new stuff. Like I didn't even understand what the atomic stuff was before. Like we've never gone over that. And I don't know if that's something I, I did take a UX course, um, uh, a long time ago, um, from, um, uh, UC Berkeley, 
uh, extension. And um, it didn't cover anything like this. Like it's how, how new is the atomic stuff? Is it? How much do you pay for that? No, I was joking. <laughs> uh, well, it was, um, it was a UX course that was um, not necessarily based around, it was, it was, it wasn't based on um, web. It was based on usability in general. So like, sure. um, like one of our projects was to like, take a thing that you have at home and redesign it so that it works better for you. And I'm left-handed. So like, I mean, everything in my house doesn't work for me. <laughs> so it was a, you know, there's a virtual smorgasbord. And so I, I made it, um, my idea was a um, can opener that you could flip around. So it would be lefty, um, uh -huh. you know, so that, cause right-handed can openers are literally the bane of my existence. Um, uh, but like it, it, it went into um, more stuff like around, um, layout and stuff but not like none of the tools so we only ever designed um uh like pixel perfect um mock-ups that somebody else would do deal with um and uh stuff like that so i guess it wasn't really like a full stacky kind of thing it was more of a um yeah. like designer kind of thing i guess yeah no, that makes sense well that's good thank you for yeah. uh, coming yeah. it was a good course i um i would like to uh come back for other things i think this is a really awesome um resource that y'all ha have here it's open for everyone not yeah. just Arizona, even though that's when i first started I was supposed to be that way but I'm like, <laughs> everything's remote now it doesn't matter yeah, yeah. <laughs> Arizona is the hub for ux I, that's what i want everybody can come that's yeah cool. i like that um okay. i'll definitely push it? push it on more of my, my classmates yeah that'd be great yeah, change it ux a to z Except yeah. next next week or next yeah. month, which is uh, yeah, user well, visibility day. day. Yeah, so I have to find out what what to do about that. They have one in California, but I don't know if it's in San Francisco. Uh, a lot of times they might have two. I know they have one in LA, but I'm not sure up in the Bay Area. Yeah, we're still not having anything in person yet. So yeah. like it like, I mean, we just got back um, restaurants. <laughs> you're just so. you're not allowed to eat. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're only and, and even then you have to like you know show them their your thing on your phone that yeah. it says that you you are allowed to be in the restaurant. So it's yeah. uh, it's a lot. Be a human. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, How uh, oh, are we good? Are we good to go? I was just more? saying, in, in terms of discussion or um to of demos, this is really all I have. I can okay. go back to my slides. So we got. Raj Sumail, no styling. We saw static styling. I hacked away my Flexbox in the navigation. We did Flexbox for content and Bootstrap for content. So awesome. I did everything I had planned. Um, so again, I had like two little discussion topics if we wanted to go into, like if people weren't participating to fill up the time. Um, so just how to design dynamic UIs and working with developers. So. I don't know if you guys have a preference of what you'd rather talk about, or you just want to take time to chat among yourselves. Yeah, I think we're. Well, Are you over? We still have thirteen people, but I think we probably cut it. Oh yeah. At eight, and um, we do have one question. If you could show the resource slide. Yeah, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I would love that too. Any questions? So this is the resources I use. So it's like. Um, uh, uh, so this is just that image for, uh, ooh, sorry, click atomic design image that I used. This is the link for bootstrap. If you're interested in looking at the documentation of that. And then this is the starter project I used that has the bootstrap and gulp already installed. Um, um, that's kind of a long URL. So I'll, I'll let you copy it. If anyone's interested, Can you read it out loud for us. <laughs> I just want to make sure I got it right. <laughs> Um, yeah. So like, if you're um, ready to start playing around with stuff um, and you have a developer friend, um, you go ahead and use that um, bootstrap starter um, to template basic five. It's bootstrap five is the version. That's what the five is for. Um, so that has the, the gulp already set up and you just have to learn a little bit of command line interface stuff to get that working, but it's, um, it's a relatively um, low impact way to get to the, that um, being able to compile SAS files. Um, so it's, it's, I recommend that is doesn't take very long to get set up. 
Everyone ready for the next slide? I have like the learning resources on the next yeah. slide. You're going to yeah. post it anyway. So. I'm snapping shot. I'm snapping screenshots at this point. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, what am I talking about? We're in the, the 21st century. Come on. You don't have to copy you're not a notebook anymore. Just take a picture of it. <laughs> I'll use, I'll um, use it, uh, character recognition later to just convert it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, so here's um, so just some Flexbox um, resources. It had the bootstrap on the, the previous page, but um, this, this is Flexbox ones. There's uh, two of them. They're both pretty good. If you're more visual, go with the first one. If you'd rather look at the code, go to the second one. Um, or you can look at both and just compare them. They both do the same thing. And then um, that course I was talking about, it's a free Khan Academy. Uh, they they, it goes, it's a whole unit for web development. It goes through uh html and css like we were talking about today um but it doesn't really i don't know if it covers responsive design it didn't look too far into or responsive development i don't know if it went that far i didn't go look into it too far but um it also covers javascript so you can get into um a little bit of uh, actually working with some code um kind of stuff with that if you're interested and javascript's cool. pretty lightweight easy to learn um it's not my favorite I prefer TypeScript, but um, JavaScript is based, well, TypeScript is based on JavaScript. It's a superset of JavaScript. It's still a, a web language. Very cool. Thank you so much. This was, this was fantastic. Yeah, thanks. And um, lets me know all the things that I don't know yet. <laughs> makes me feel good considering, you know, that, um, uh, come on, it was really early. This slide, you know considering oh i uh two days ago i go so how are you feeling about it <laughs> she was like, i didn't start it like <laughs> all right there's only 116 people coming to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i can't um i can't do a presentation without spending an, a month on it um yeah. like you're like like every single day working on some little piece i'm, I'm ridiculous when it comes to presentations <laughs> yeah i pretty much just like wrote an outline uh, wrote the code and then put some slides together that kind of went in, you know, eased into the, the demo stuff. So that's good. It worked out, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for your time and, and your effort on that. It's, it was really great. Well, Have a good night, everyone. All right. Good night. Bye. Good luck. Down thank to you. 10 people. Just goodbye. Nice everybody. work, Rachel. Thank you. Uh, thanks for everybody stick around. It's really awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Recording now.